Hi everyone, this is K-Search again. I hope we have cleared the air for the origin of the cancer formation and metastasis from the previous videos. So, thank you for tuning in for K-Search this week. Welcome! And as promised, we will discuss about the sequelae of a tumor in a human body. This is the clinical aspect of a tumor, namely either neoplasia or cancer. So this is the sequelae of a tumor. So let's go. For early cancers, 90% of them will not have any symptoms. So your patient might have already have a cancer cell in some region of the body but it doesn't produce any symptoms remember this the rule of thumb if there's a symptom this is at least a stage 2 or a stage 3 disease so what is the clinical aspect of a tumor We can further divide into local complication or systemic complication. So for local, for you guys to easier to remember is the four B's. I will further elaborate on that. But for systemic, the first is the constitutional symptoms. Secondly, is cancer cachexia. The third one, hmm, a lot of students will love this, tumor lysis syndrome. Yeah, today, this week, we are going to introduce a lot of big, big words. And the last one, and the most important one, is the palaneoplastic syndrome. Let us start locally, the local aspect for a tumor. The first B is block. Hmm, let's say the cancer is in the bowel. What will it cause? It will cause the intestinal obstruction. So this is one of the most common um, local symptoms for a cancer. You, the second one would be a neurons. If you plot the neuron, you have a neurological deficit. It can be a central or it can be a peripheral. We are going to go then to another series about neuron here. What are the vessels in the human body that you know? Yeah, the first one is artery. Yes, everybody knows that. Second, vein. The third is the lymphatics. And last and not the least, is the portal system. For later lectures, we are going to talk about this in the anatomy series. We are looking at the blood vessels. If it's blocked, it will cause a ischemia. Hmm. It's a non-brainer, right? So for lymphatics, what will it cause? Yeah, it will cause a swelling. It's usually the subcutaneous tissue. The system, yeah, you know that is actually the varices, right? The varices. Secondly, it will cause bleeding. So once the tumor have already grown so much, uh, it will cause ischemia. Let's say this is the tumor cells, the tumor, sorry, the mass, right? So either it will compress middle that is what we call a central necrosis or it will just outgrow when it outgrows and uh, the angiogenesis is not enough if the angiogenesis is not enough to support let's say this area it will become ischemia and it will break and it will bleed it's going to bleed 
So this is the one that caused the hemorrhage. Next, the third one, another B is burst. This is also is caused by tissue destruction. A very uh, easy example is the bowel. Let's say a colon cancer. Instead of blocking the power, it burst. Right? It bursts at the power wall, and that's the one that causes the peritonitis. And lastly, I'm saying for bees, but it's actually the another last B is pain. I'm so sorry. So the pain. They can divide it into somatic effect if the tumor is at the skin area or somatic area it can cause somatic pain the number two pain can be neuronal and the number three one is the muscular mm, so cancer pain is also a very big topic we are not going to dwell on for this lecture this week but you must understand this the pain in cancer is there's a lot of mechanism that is not only somatic per se. So let's move to the systemic manifestation. The first, as what I said just now, the constitutional symptoms. The word constitutional, it just means general. So when we talk about general, it meant we don't know. We don't know why it happened, but it happens. Oh, mind you, constitutional symptoms doesn't mean the patient have a cancer. But most cancer patients have constitutional symptoms. The first one is fever. Usually the fever is uh, mild fever. It won't go to high grade fever. Number two is anorexia. Or oh, a lot of my students like to say loss of appetite. Okay, so why the patient have loss of appetite? It's go way back to the nutrition. The patient is uh, already in a hypercatabolic state. Now, this one we will talk about this later on in cancer cachexia as well. Uh, because the patient is more nourished as well, he has a malaise. The patient is always lethargic. And the last but not the least, the malaria, the muscle pain. The patient will have uh, this muscle pain, right? And of course, weight loss. Weight loss is another important symptom for a cancer. And I encourage you guys to quantify the weight loss to 5%, 10%, 15%, more than 20 percent okay so all these are very very important because if at 15 percent the mortality for the patient is at least 75 percent if 20 percent <laughs> the patient is going to die the number two is the cancer can get sick. cancer can get sick. It belongs to the topic of nutrition. If you look at the patient, always have a anorexia and also a taji. And the patient is very not well. The food intake will be very, very much less. And just now I have introduced a word for you hypercatabolic state. You see the tumor is doing nothing but it's just growing and growing. By growing it needs more energy. It uses a lot of energy and it's going to deplete the energy reserve of the patient inside the Bohemian body. What the energy reserve? The first one is the glycogen. The second is the fat. And lastly, the patient will use the protein 
to generate energy. This is very very bad for the patient. So, and this cancer cachexia is underdiagnosed in most of the cancer patients. So, that's why it's very very important for you to look at the weight loss and try to quantify how many percent was lost. Is it five percent, ten percent, fifteen percent? And you can refer to a dietitian to promote the nutrition of the patient so that more the treatment later on will be beneficial for the patient and because of cancer cachexia be very 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 careful for this syndrome VVD syndrome we are going to talk about this in later lectures because VVD syndrome is a very huge topic as well the third one will be a tumor lysis syndrome mind you the tumor lysis syndrome is quite rare let's say it's a tumor cell it dies when the tumor cell dies it's not like the normal cell normal cell dies through apoptosis which is a programmed cell death but if a cancer cancer cell dies it will just burst you just burst and what is inside the cell you have uric acid you have potassium you have phosphate and also you have calcium imagine this tumor is already growing grow 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 like nobody business it's the growth is more than the supply what happened the cell burst if the cell burst, it will release all these substances and patient will have a hyperuricemia this is first sign to detect tumor lysis syndrome number two, the patient will have a hypercalcemia and he will have a hyperphosphatemia and last but not least, it's very weird, will be hypocalcemia and because of these electrolyte imbalances, the patient will go into acidosis and lastly will go to renal failure then death manifestation that is the most exciting of all is the palaneoplastic syndrome palaneoplastic syndrome is not uncommon though when the patient has a palaneoplastic syndrome it just indicates that it was a highly malignant tumor is actually the grading the tumor is more aggressive Palaneoplastic syndrome is usually are caused by hormones most of it it can be caused by the ectopic steroids production and it can also caused by the ectopic cytokines and all these are actually secreted by the tumor cells the most common palaneoplastic syndrome that we know of is hypercalcemia. The calcium in the human body is only around 2.2 to 2.6 level. Anything more than that kills. I mean, more less than that kills. 90% of it is because of this PTH, parathyroid hormone related peptide. This are actually secreted humorally by the tumor cells it can also cause by the local osteolytic activity this is talking about the metastasis over the bones some tumor cells can cause this activated vitamin D the production of the activated vitamin D and last and not the least it can be caused by the atopic PTH production. That's why when the patient comes in uh, with
give a diagnosis of cancer, the first blood uh, investigation you must do is the blood urea and electrolytes. We must actively detect this paraneoplastic syndrome. The second syndrome will be the SIADH, the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone production. This is a condition where it is a hypoosmolar, but it is a euvolemic hyponatremia. The sodium is low. We actually can talk about this more later on. And the most common SIADH for the cancer is a small cell lung cancer. But it doesn't mean that other cancer cannot have it, but more prevalent in a small cell lung cancer. The third paraneoplastic syndrome or Cushing syndrome. <laughs> this is rather rare. Tumor cell has a secretion of this uh, SCTH adrenocorticotrophic hormone. So SCTH will cause what? Yes, will cause cortisol hormone. And this will have uh, the cushionoid uh, facies for the patient. Uh, patient will also might have a uh, blood thinning. Alright, so the number fourth one. The patient will have uh, what we call a non islet cell tumor hypoglycemia. This specific condition actually is not uncommon. It's because of the production of this uh, hormone, this called uh, IGF, insulin like growth factor that is produced by the tumor cells. Uh, because this is insulin, it takes the blood glucose away into the tumor cells and this is the one that causes the patient to have a hypoglycemia. You need to treat this condition promptly. Last and not the least is acromegaly. Acromegaly is caused by this uh, growth hormone releasing hormone production by the cells or the tumor cells and uh, it's actually most common in this pituitary tumor and there are other hormones as well like the renin renin like the atopic beta hcg like the gonadotrophin and also there are a lot of others which we are not going to cover in this video because there are so many of them and so the most important thing you might need to remember paraneoplastic syndrome first hypercalcemia then SIADH Cushing syndrome hypoglycemia and last but not the least acromegaly So this way is rather heavy, <laughs> the sequelae of the tumor. Why do we need to know? So that you can actively detect this manifestation and treat the patient. Let the summarize a bit. So the clinical manifestation of tumor, it can be focal, and systemic. What are the four B's? Which is block, bleed, burst, and pain. These are the local manifestation. How about the systemic constitutional symptoms? Secondly, would be the cancer tickets here. Thirdly, is the what is it? Tumor lysis. 
last but not the least, Tana New Plastic Syndrome. So I think this wrapped up the video for this week. So if you guys have any uh, doubts, please don't hesitate to put in the comment below. Thank you for tuning in to case search this week. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification button. We are going to be a more exciting week in which we are going to talk about the steps to diagnose the cancer. It's all about triple assessment. So please tune in next week at the same time, same day, the same channel. This is case search. Bye.